And we are back from the MIT Media Lab. Hi, I'm Daza Greenwood, a scientist here, legal scientist, they sometimes say. And I'm joined by the collaborator that helped us bring the first prototype jam to a successful conclusion, who's now back as an entrepreneur with a project in the Appathon, Caitlin Still and Rooney. Welcome. Thank you, Daza. Yeah. My name's Caitlin Still and Rooney, and I've been collaborating with Daza for the past five months now. And I just recently came up with a project idea for this Appathon. It's called Storewell. So I will get into that a little bit later, but it's a, an app for massage therapists and their clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it'll, um, sh Caitlin will be getting her um, license shortly in New York in massage therapy and you know, looks at the statute. What do I need? Okay, I need intake forms. I need uh, sort of, um, plans for people. Wellness plans have to keep some records for seven years. Okay, where's the app for that? No app. Good entrepreneur building it now. Um, and I'll tell you what, a lot of it's personal data from your phone, from your watch, telemetry. Where does it go? We're looking at hooking up the open PDS. And of course, we'd, how could we ever do it without Open ID Connect? Like we wouldn't, we couldn't, not to Caitlin. And so we're, not, we're, so we're building a cadre of people that can, we hope, um, um, do this journey with us. What journey are you talking about, Daza? Well, the point of this segment is really um, the team that we're talking to in Kansas City, Missouri, KCMO, in City Hall, as I understand it. And it's the Kansas City, Missouri Law School team um, that is um, participating with their um, law school project that's a multi-stakeholder project in the Appathon, and also collaborators in the Prototype Jam and some other semesters and friends. And so, um, Evan, could, could you just start us off and talk to us about this project that we want to highlight having to do with Open ID Connect and cities. Um, what a great concept. Can you introduce the people there and um, just get us started um, for the spotlight on Open ID Connect in Municipal Context Project? Sure, sure. So uh, I'm Evan Absher. I'm a UMK law, UMKC law student in my third year, and I'm also um, an employee currently for the city of Kansas City. Um, and I work on policy. Um, and I'll introduce Paul or Paul can introduce himself. Hi, I'm Paul Barham, and I'm the captain of the Code Brigade, Code for America Brigade here in Kansas City. Hi, okay. right, Captain. That's great. We love Code for America around here. Hosted the Code Across event, and you know about 300 people, um, thanks to the Boston Brigade. And um, good to have you on board, Cap. Um, and I'm Kate Garman. I'm also at the law school, and I also work for the mayor as a policy analyst for the city of Kansas City. Hi, great to see you again. And. Um, I remember in Boston, you had a lot to say and some real good handle, Kate, on uh, the on big data and the policy and legal implications. And you know, it lurks just below, below the surface, but fundamentally, um, those analytics questions and big data questions come down to small data questions, personal data questions that may be addressed through the methods and the mechanisms um, that are being applied right here in your in this project on Open ID Connect. And the intersection of that and a public sector entity might be what's missing is finding that right fit for uh, for that. So yep. can you talk to us a little bit more about what is this project? What are you fixing to do? And um, then let's let's dive in. Well, uh, the 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 project, the hope is to build an understanding of how we uh, can have an Open ID Connect uh, architecture protocol for a municipality to be an identity provider. So, you know, all those legal principles, the data understanding that we're, that we're gaining every day legally that, um, you know, data is more analogous to property, that it's a substantive right in and of itself, that privacy is incomplete when you're talking about uh, data as part of privacy, data needs to be a standalone sort of um, substantive right. So how do we facilitate that understanding? How do we facilitate Dr. Pentland's, um, you know, data bill of rights and the White House's uh, consumer data bill of rights and in uh, an actual policy service uh, function. Um, and so we thought, well, instead of Google providing your identity through as an IDP, whose interests may not align perfectly with the users, uh, municipalities' interests um, align far, far more with an individual's uh, interest than, say, a private entity. So what if the municipality provided the identity? Well, that became interesting because then we saw that um, trust federations that were already built legally and, and in real life could then be just kind of overhauled into the uh, OAuth 2 and the um, Open ID Connect protocols. So um, what we're hoping to do, and I'll let Paul speak real fast here, 
uh, is um, in the prototype jam. We're hoping to come up with a demo. Paul, do you want to say something real fast? Uh, yes. Just real quickly, we have some uh, code that we are going to take and actually kind of expose all of the data that's being transferred between all the parties during this electronic exchange. So our first step is really just allowing people to learn what data really is in the context of OpenID Connect. And we hope then to take a next step and create our own IDP and show what, if we had our own IDP, what sort of data we could add to it. And then hopefully in the future, we could put some sort of federation behind it. Fantastic. Um, that, I can't tell you how long how many years or decades I've been waiting to hear these words from this composition of people. Um, you're, you know, you've got a business perspective, a business case for using an identity as a service. You've got really good representation from on the legal side. And there's Paul who just hacked the code. Um, like I, I saw him do it, rendered as much help as I could, but he did it. Like he hacked the code that, um, that allows for OpenID Connect identity providers to log into a WordPress site, in that case, PHP. Um, and um, that's a, um, a widget that's been needing some, some good hacking, and it, it has not worked um, very easily up to now. And so it's been a public service already, just what you've done to get ready to start, in a sense. And um, uh, did, did Paul have to, to leave us already? Mm -hmm. Okay, thought so. Um, so I, I don't know if you heard any of that, but if he, can he still hear me? No, he's not. Okay, well, he'll hear the echo of our digital footprint here um, in YouTube land. And um, this is the right composition of um, talent and the right time to make a dent in this. So let's talk about um, your project in more detail. Um, first of all, in the context of the Appathon, and then let's, why don't we start to look, um, kind of zoom out and look ahead um, to this prototype jam number two you have coming up um, at UMKC Law School. Um, and then maybe the road ahead. So um, what do you, what will happen, um, what's happening right now, I guess? Like, so you've got a project right now. Can you describe what is a project, what do you have, and what do you not yet have? And, um, and what are you looking to do next? And what, might, what do you hope that will show? So I think what we um, have is uh, we've, we've kind of created a central space for collaboration in GitHub, and thank you, Daza, for, um, you know, uh, kind of forcing that on us. Uh, but um, I think what we're doing is we're gathering, the team is gathering a better understanding of all the different sort of players and roles and, and getting a real granular detail of sort of the theoretical architecture, which is great, and all the different options um, and what each sort of um, player does and the unique presence of each player in this architecture, um, which is really helpful. Uh, because we're then recording that kind of gathering and understanding in a place where the next class over the summer can take that and build off of that understanding. So that's a great place. We're also, um, we're building understanding in institutions that we're a part of, which is huge because uh, although Kansas City is very innovative and they want and, and, the, and the culture is desirable, uh, we lack a lot of um, sort of information that, let's say, Boston would have, right? We don't have the access Boston has to MIT and Harvard. So for us, the um, we have a willing spirit, but we need a, we need to come up to speed at a, at a greater rate because we kind of lack the sort of base context and understanding. Mm -hmm. So we're building that in both UMKC Law, um, with the legal profession generally, at Kansas City, Missouri, and at the Kaufman, it, you know, all of those institutions are, are kind of learning along with us. Um, and then what we need is we need to understand um, the, technic the technical requirements of kind of building this, pro this, this architecture, um, because I don't think we really comprehend what this requires on a technical level. I, uh, Paul does. I think Paul does, but but his ability to communicate it to me is limited because when he starts speaking that language, I can't keep up with him. So I think what we need to do is we need to demonstrate to the stakeholders in the community the basic fundamental aspects of this architecture in a, in a demonstrable way where they can see it on their computer uh, so that they get it. Because when I speak about it or write about it in the written form, it goes right over their heads. But if we can demonstrate it to them, through you know, kind of basic web pages and server logs and things like that, then they can kind of get a grasp of what we're talking about. Um, 
So that's, I think, where we're at right now, Kate. Well, I was going to add, um, Ashley Han, Kansas City Chief Innovation Officer, mm -hmm. just spoke in front of the business session to the mayor and to full Kansas City City Council. And she has informed them of our partnership and told them what, what projects we're working on. She specifically talked about Open ID Connect and mm -hmm. the fact that we're doing a prototype jam. So this goes to inform both the legal community right. and the city. I mean, everyone is kind of on the same course of information yeah. and trajectory of implementation. And I will tell you, and this is in my capacity now as the city policy person in the mayor's office, um, we, okay. I helped put a new hat on too. Yeah, I, <laughs> we, there you go. I drafted privacy principles for the city. I helped Ashley draft them um, because we are entering in. Ashley, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt you. Like, you've got such a fan base in Boston. I was talking to Bill Oates the other day, who's CIO in mm -hmm. with Chris and Nigel and I went in Boston and now he's in the state and I mentioned I was going out there soon and he said will you be seeing Ashley and we had a little it's like like so it's so great to just hear that that's who you're working with and um, you know what an innovative um, leader a thought leader in the United States so forgive the interruption but go on you, you drafted the privacy principles that's obviously relevant go on right. we're drafting privacy principles and and um, they're taken from the um, privacy principles from the White House's piece of legislation that's out there, and we kind of uh, reconfigured them a, a little bit to um, kind of fit our needs a little bit better. But they're essentially the White House's principles, and uh, and so that by that you're probably talking about FIPS, Fair Information Practice Principles, and right. you're probably talking about the sort of somewhat like the little twist on it that came out recently in their draft right. um, Consumer Privacy Bill of Rights bill, I think, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. That was, model, that, was, that was the model I used when I sent it to Ashley. She did some drafting, then I did some drafting, then we had McLean Bryant, who's the director of policy for the mayor. She did a little bit of, uh, she, she gave some notes. So we were all kind of passing it around. But essentially the, the point of this kind of tangent is um, that was drafted specifically with the smart city in mind, that we know that this is going to increase data access, data utility, um, and people are nervous about it, and rightfully so. The city's nervous about it. We 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 want to ensure that people have notice and choice when it comes to their data. And so we've drafted these privacy principles, but we don't have anything substantive to really carry them out to to right. enforce them. And so this is where this is really where Open ID Connect and this project stem from. I was working on this, and, and we had been working on playing with that idea. This privacy principle project came up. I drafted that, and I said, "Wait a second, we need like a personal data store or Yuma or things like that to really give it the due process, right? We have we have an idea of judicial and court and case based due process, but what if we could kind of preempt all that long, arduous process by giving them uh, the consumers a sort of lightweight tool that's Relatively easy, timely, and provides notice, choice, and control, and that would that would fulfill the privacy principles that we set out. Um, hopefully, that's the hope, and so that really is where this project is going. I, I think, uh, you know, we're a long way from there, but I think we can get all the relevant players if we can kind of in the next on the next, you know, the prototype jam and then the National Day of Civic Hacking, and then further on, if we can start proving to them and showing them a tool and getting something functional. Then all of a sudden they can see the end game and see, okay, this is how we facilitate and fulfill our privacy principles, while at the same time engendering entrepreneurship, engendering mm -hmm. innovation, allowing those private the the, com the startup companies in the living lab to get access to data because we're not afraid because we have a robust system of notice and choice and and we can encourage entrepreneurs like Caitlin to dive into personal identifiable information without concern because we know the citizens have an individual control and so it's instead of being a top-down bureaucratic system it's a consumer to service provider relationship that that the consumer can control very good thank you it, um, so that was extremely useful and um, I think I'll be replaying that clip mm -hmm. from time to time um, I hope in the future as uh, as this thread continues to weave um, into a larger fabric that's happening right across the country now. Um, I think with uh, public and private sector entities beginning to adopt these technologies and recognizing, sometimes not as a driver for adopting it, but after the fact, hey, these same capabilities that you get with this um, um, method whereby individuals click the consent button to log in and can revoke the consent button to break that endpoint, and they click the consent button, the 
authorize mm -hmm. button, yep. which is a consent legally. It's a um, it's a um, business transaction. It business. It's a um, OAuth. You know, kind of um, you know, tokenized um, endpoint resource access technically, but you know, it's it's a thing which fundamentally we can call it that nexus point where you can find the opportunity to make a real um, that a real to, to to actually grapple with and create new solutions with very little movement of the existing infrastructure and practices um, uh, for what we're calling privacy notice and notice and um, choice you were calling it but then every so often you would say control in the context of this paradigm of the user clicking a button so I think it's what you're saying is fundamentally sound and it's it's just right at the just right time I may I take a moment to just maybe put four or five things in your ear as um, things to consider um, and um, and um, Caitlin's taking notes now because uh, um, we're all on the same team. We're yes. basically on the UMKC team um, now. <laughs> you guys came to Boston. That's right. UMKC has co-opted MIT. <laughs> yes, you have. And, and Caitlin's coming as well. Um, and, uh, oh, good. And um, and so you know, um, J Jonathan Askin's coming, and uh, we've got your back on this, and we're building toward um, what we hope will be a strong push on um, at least the prototype jam, and then we'll see how things go after that. So leading up to that. I'd like to suggest something that we can do here is, um, you know, it's an academic institution and um, the tie up with the ABA is actually for CLE. Um, it's not accredited, so you won't get credit, but we're actually engaged in a class now, a law class, a class is in session, um, but don't sweat it. Uh, and so here comes, so what we're going to come out with, I, what we're building toward here is modules for workshops, seminars, and MOOCs, you know, the massive online cl uh, classes that we're going to look not mysteriously a lot like the what Jonathan and I already, already like to do online legal hackathons um, but you know instead of a hackathon project it'll be like a lab session um, but here's some curriculum now and your project is at the core of at least my part of the curriculum number one um, let's take a look at an industry thing that I haven't mentioned before partly because I didn't want to distract you but you've done such a good job absorbing um, what I have shown you I think you're this is the next thing. Um, if you can see it, this is called idfederation.org. And um, it is the finest example of, of a large um, cross-boundary community dealing with use of federated identity um, that I'm aware of and, and, and adopting the business legal technical operating rules um, approach that, that you're studying right now. Mm -hmm. um, and so can you, I don't know if you can see this, but um, it, this is a, in this case it's some um, insurance and financial services industry yeah. and their major problem was brokers and agents you know some of them had you know 10, 60 passwords they, across the different um, um, you know companies that they would work with if they had to write a policy or do some wealth management and then even in a get in a single company like Hartford or a Liberty Mutual there could be many different systems with passwords and they didn't want to compete on passwords they wanted to actually streamline and simplify that and this is a good technology for that they needed to agree on rules and finally um, after trying a few other um, methods, um, we, we ended up um, talking about the BLT method and they really embraced it um, more so than any other constituency has to date. And so this is how it looks for them and something to keep an eye on. It might not look so different for others, although this is this is industry, public, private would be different. There's some sort of group, this is a board of directors here, that has to promulgate rules when you do finally have them. You know, if it was a big consortium or a bunch of utilities, you know, it might look like a National Conference of Utility Commissioners or something, right. or it could look any which way, or it could be public-private. And then at some point, though, you want rules that feed back in, that are living. It's a dynamic area where the technology is changing. A lot, many things are changing. Mm -hmm. So you actually have a business committee, legal committee, and technical committee. So like the CIOs, CTOs, and so forth of the different um, of, of across the industry sector, the vendors, the the um, insurance carriers, the brokers, the agents got would, would have representation at these at that committee. They would fill out the sections of the technical, the technical section, and then the legal people, was general counsel, compliance, um, and so forth. They filled out the legal section, liability being the biggest one. But there's other stuff in there, incorporation by reference, and some IP, and you know, there's a few things comes up and the business was the most important one that's what drove it so what is the business proposition why are we doing it what are the key practices what are the outcomes which services are we doing and which ones aren't we doing and yeah. maybe we'll do others later so you know they but there is a, a feedback loop here and ultimately the chair of each of those committees that was trusted by all of them would sit down from time to time and heart and just string together the um, the content 
Um, and that's how it is. That's one of the ways that you can just literally get um, a set of these rules that's fit to purpose. But you know, the only way to start is what you're doing on this project right now. You kind of took a model and you're just starting to draft something and you, you're, you're, in a, you're in a catbird seat yourself, Evan, because you're in City Hall and you're, you're, you, you're, kind of, you're um, operating multiple communities and it's a good place as any, a very good place actually to have a draft that people can look at so they can even start to talk about iterating it and who would be going to these meetings and why. So anyway, this is, and they've actually done the very best thing ever. They have their entire trust framework, unlike almost any other industry group, available um, under Creative Commons license. So you can go ahead and take it, and you can um, kind of you know go to town on it, basically. Um, and it's available. Oh, here it is, right, right in their site. So when you have a chance, you have the participation agreements and what they call the trust framework. Um, some people call it trust framework. Some people call it operating rules. I don't know. Can you see this? No, I can't. But you could throw the link up in the chat, and that'd be great. Yeah. Um, so basically, the, the, it's right. So what? What this? Oh, I'm sorry. Because like a champ, I'm not screen sharing. Just I'll just scan it. This is literally their trust framework, and it's Creative Commons. And you know, first section, business stuff. Who are the roles? You know, what do they play? There's, and then you know, some legal legal section. Boom. Yeah. And great. then technical section, and that's. Um, that's what they talked about at a few big in-person meetings, and then they had a lot of phone meetings, and then they went, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and then they repped it out. This here is kind of interesting. So, like, you want to know what is the data that you're literally exchanging? This is the metadata, and they kind of, these are the attributes, and, you know, which, which roles are exchanging which data, because um, they practically needed to know that, and that, that was something important enough to put up in the rules, so everyone knew what the deal was, and when they change it, they up -rev the rules to version, you know, you know, 1.2, 1.3, um, and now there's a ramp and there's a way that people can um, can plan. And because, you know, some people may have, um, you know, like a six month period uh, to adopt new stuff and that's fine. So they have a governing body and a way to, to evolve, but also to um, be completely quite distributed. So, you know, this is v massively distributed. There's right. so many thousands of players in this market, right. and hundreds of thousands and millions in, in other markets. So here's a, there's just one or two examples here. And th this language is heavily negotiated over couple more years um I mean, like i hosted you know 50 60 person meetings from time to time in in uh, cic across the way and so there's one example the other thing is nstic national stand national strategy for trusted identities in cyberspace it's a significant it was funded by this a republican congress and by this democratic president because they also knew that we're not competing on identity we're actually vulnerable by having all these passwords and a soft underbelly that are being exploited it's not helping the economy it's not helping security. It's not um, helping innovation. It's it's a real problem, uh, and so uh, that's one of the more major things that you should um, that that um, I just going to ask that you take a look at before we kind of land, so that you just kind of know that it, it exists. Um, and um, that strategy said we should we need a national steering group that has privacy people, government, industry, um, you know, identity providers, relying parties. Um, you know, 13 stakeholder groups. And so luckily um, Congress funded it and NIST um, convened meetings. And now there's a plenary that has open elections um, and there's people that represent city and state governments. Um, so people represent um, uh, every constituency and they are trying to come up with these kind of basic rules. And it's a long, slow process, but you know, every, but you know, um, thank goodness um, we have a place where when you complete each leg of the job at the city level. And as it starts to get to be a player, you have representation there. You can vote for a new person if they're not saying the right thing. And you can start building some coalitions with other people that like your trust framework or can improve it. And then you can, this is a really good mechanism intended for your participation and to promulgate out a legitimate, transparent, nice governance um, um, uh, method for, um, for decisions to be made in the open and negotiated hard, but in, in a fair, transparent manner. Because right. that's even like, even though there are privacy and security implications, there's also that as entrepreneurs or as like startup businesses, we are subject subject to these big companies like Google or Facebook. If we want to integrate with something that everybody's using, it's going to be difficult for us to actually become an identity provider yep. if we don't know the steps to 
changing the rules. Just so. And most people, it's beyond them. But you know, you, you guys are going, you're going through law school. You're within a, 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 a public sector environment, um, and so there's people need to. There's everyone's going to have to pull their weight here. Every consumer's going to, have to become more educated and learn some new things, and people are going to have to create some new stuff. Yep. Uh, but there are methods now where that can happen, yep. and um, and in fact, um, they're pretty good. I, I definitely spent. You know, I put my time into this organization. It's time for other people <laughs> to step forward, um, and it's there. The last thing I'll show you because it's. You don't want to miss this. Um, it's it's uh, it could be a key um, a key element of, of a solution. Um, is this very simple tool that you've already taken to and you've already done the investment to get started on? Um, and it's and it's literally. Um, wait, are you seeing? Oh no, you're seeing some Alice in Wonderland thing. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, boom. Look familiar. Nope. Yep. There you go. It's GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And so here's where here we have the the model system rules um, that um, thanks to DARPA, you know, they were able to fund. So it every example is in an industry example. Now this one was designed to be a model that you can use as a Rorschach test, basically, and kind of see the city in in it if you're doing it from that perspective. Um, then you've gone ahead and you did exactly the right thing. You forked the, the, fork, the repo is forked into this open repository where you've been iterating a little bit and there's issue tickets and everything that you would, you know, every, it, this is exactly the way, I guess I'm not so much speaking to you now, Evan and, and, and Kate, but I'm now speaking to, you know, who you are, all you developers, all you investors, all you people that want to know, you know, what, where are we on the maturity level and what are the, you know, who, who's a responsible player at a party that we can actually deal with. These people, like they're actually hacking it in GitHub. And if you have any question about it, you go ahead and read the trend. It's right there, man. Like look at the issue tickets, read the wiki, you know, look at the commit history and you'll see what I'm talking about. And so um, that's right there. You've got a seat. They have a seat at the table. It's right here. Um, and so moving forward, um, I just want to say um, for your prototype, um, it seems like you've got some great things that you could do. And I think I can, we've got some people that like to hack OpenID Connect. Uh, we like to put it in different way, uh, in different you know, um, scenarios. And so I think what, what I'll start doing on my side um, is um, starting to gather more and more community to come to maybe we can have a meeting or two or, or an or a email list before the prototype jam and see who can we invite to participate remotely uh, within our repo to fill gaps that, um, that we might not be able to um, adequately address in such a short time between like Paul and I and others that will be there in person. Um, so I will commit to, to doing that um, and to getting uh, kind of like beefing up the team. Um, and then the other thing I'd like to commit to is uh, two others. One of them is um, the stuff I just showed you and the things that you've, you've really done well with looking at roles and transactions and um, data and looking across business, legal, and technical dimensions. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, perhaps best of all, um, beginning to deal with um, system rules and, and talking about services in a way that has an architecture. Um, I can, um, I'll come with a loaf of bread under my arm to, um, to UMKC and try to give something back to, to Professor Lapino and to um, Michael Robach and to Dean Suni, who have been so generous uh, with, with, with my, um, I, 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 we're sort of like a wild card hacker here in the media lab now. I've gone wild or I've gone like feral more or less uh, since I've been practicing law. And they've just been terrific in terms of having proper curriculum and proper procedures <laughs> and, you know, and an education that has real integrity. And so um, they're stepping up the game now. I will bring that early curriculum there and we'll do our best to begin to, through law.mit.edu, build out you know, um, uh, something that can um, support and reflect what's happening in, in the law and with our friends at the ABA now and CLEs. And finally, um, uh, I think w there's a pr some projects coming down the road in, uh, in fall, a series of workshops with some cities. Seattle has expressed real interest. Um, of course, you know, um, we actually helped with a, a show and tell to, uh, in your city. Uh, Boston and Raphael um, were real leaders in the first prototype jam. Um, Caitlin helped them work out all the use cases and the data flows uh, for um, OpenID Connect integration um, and their Salesforce, um, actually, um, as, a, as an RP. Um, which is what their portal was for small businesses. Yeah, yeah. And um, relying party. Um, yep. Uh, and so um, we've got a few cities, and there's more on the way. I'm, I'm told from Ben Kalos, uh, perhaps New York and others. And so we're going to try to circle up some cities and do a few workshops, and um, and then have some projects and some curriculum, and really 
have a focus, a new focused way to get one or two projects within six months or so, really moved forward with open source reusable components and start to grapple with the challenge that Nigel, Jacob, and Chris Osgood posed to all of us, mm -hmm. which was um, they hoped that in the prototype jam, and thank goodness we have a second round now, thanks to UMKC, Casey, in the prototype jam, they said, we'd like it if you would grapple with what it would look like for the city to be an IDP. That's what they said when they came in the room um, in Boston and before the room when they were talking to uh, Raphael and I. They said, you know, obviously initially we're going to be just an RP, let people log in, but the real challenge, the real opportunity and challenge now is to understand properly what are the implications of that. Do we want to be an RP, an IDP? Are we giving away too much? Is there sovereignty or other key issues? Do we want to never be an IDP? Is it sort of like that's the sort of thing that we would, you know, like we don't run trucking companies either. Is that sort of properly the role of others? And what are the implications? How do, how do we evaluate that? They want to know a rubric. Right. And so I think that's partly what, what we're aiming to do, those three things. And um, we would be delighted to continue in partnership with you. So thanks for explaining the project. And, um, and just say, what can people do to learn more if they want to kind of learn more about where you're up to? Or what might they search or uh, where would they look? GitHub. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Get up, look at our repo. It's under Col Collab X, under the I dash. And I think uh, Michael set up uh, another repo for the UMKC course and prototype jam specifically. So I'm sure we'll we'll also be posting everything we've posted in the current repository over there as well. So they can find it there probably too. Great. The, everything in this one's an open uh, MIT open source license. And so I encourage, if it's helpful, I hope it is helpful, uh, yep. that Michael and or one of you fork this repo right in and also fork the human dynamics repo in with all the system rules and the other assets. Yep. And then hopefully as you start building stuff out, we would then fork that here. And then we'd start seeing where people were putting the most work in and then kind of um, push data to the people that are really carrying certain repos and then hope to get pull, pulling data in where others are carrying. And to the extent that we have multiple people, you know, doing the same thing, that's actually not so bad. Um, that's how we got OpenID to start with, in fact. So I am delighted to hear that UMKC's got the GitHub organization mm -hmm. and people can go to GitHub if they'd like to learn more. So with that, um, uh, you know, Caitlin, um, you know, we look forward to seeing your, um, your business start also in a GitHub repository, and um, she has a project, a little quick pitch. She's gonna um, need some help as she, corporation, trademark, even the rules by which she would be accepting personal data into a personal data store and making it available for people. And so Jonathan Askin, thank goodness, a proper law professor um, in New York, the state in which um, Caitlin will incorporate, has agreed to make it a blip clinic class, but some of these issues are too big for a state. Right. Um, and the the system rules, things that you're grappling with, not a single one person in New York uh, in in Blip or any law school I'm familiar with is, it knows what you just know now from how how much you grappled with it. Right. So your the expertise you're developing will be very very helpful for very for the yeah. next generation of entrepreneurs. Yeah. And that's the hope. And that really is the hope is that we create such a, a user friendly interface that entrepreneurs can. You know, they want to set up. Kaylin wants to set up a massage therapy business in New York. She can interact and interface with that persona, and it's easy, and it's uh, inter and it interoperates with everything else she does, and it's, it's and and it's not a pain like it is now, quite honestly. So yeah, that's a hope. That's great. I'm really excited for you guys. Right. Um, it's been a pleasure working with Daza, but also with you. I know how hard you guys are working over there, and I'm looking forward to seeing you and. A few weeks. Yeah, yeah, we look forward to seeing you guys. Like a few week. weeks. A get, week. Get One your week. barbecue ready. Yeah. Your, your appetite, your barbecue appetite ready. Yeah. We're hungry. It's yeah, remember Rick Usher kind of, he opened up a whole new world of barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so right. thanks again. Great to see you again. Thank Bye. you. Yeah. Bye. Bye, guys. See you.